So, I uh, was just at my chiropractor's because I'm um, heading out to visit Jörg on the weekend and uh, my brother. And uh, I mentioned that I was getting my second vaccination shot on Monday. And Olaf, my chiropractor, he said, oh, that's interesting. And he checked and said, uh, you know what, your atlas vertebra, which is the top vertebra of your spine, that's what your skull sits on. That's why it's called Atlas. Atlas in, in mythology is the guy who carries the world on his back. So that's why they, they call the, the top vertebra, call it Atlas. Um, and he checked and mine was moved backwards. Uh, and he said, over the last, I don't know, whenever we started vaccinating people, almost everyone who has had vaccinations uh, that he had at his, uh, uh, at his practice, almost everyone had the atlas vertebra moved back. And in my case, that's incredibly unusual. That doesn't happen usually. I have the same kinds of things that happen to me most of the time. And um, so he said he only checked because I said that I got a vaccination and he found again the atlas vertebra moved backwards slightly. And he said a lot of the other people um, get headaches like a week after the vaccination, like really strong headaches. And then they go to the hospital and either someone gets the idea that there's a connection between the vaccination and the headache, but they don't check uh, the spine. They instead do all sorts of like blood vessel screenings, the brain to, you know, uh, uh, see if there's an aneurysm or some sort of blood clot or something. And they usually don't find anything. So they give people a lot of painkillers, um, strong painkillers. And then over time, the headaches uh, subside. But um, he also said he has zero uh, research on this. He has no uh, good explanation why that is. He just noticed that almost everyone at his practice that uh, has been vaccinated had this top vertebra move backwards. And um, I found that really interesting. Olaf is not only my chiropractor, he uh, was also one of my teachers when I uh, uh, went to fitness management school 20 years ago. Very, very, very capable man. And um, usually we hang out a little and uh, chat about things that interest both of us. This is one of the things that we chatted about. And it was interesting that, uh, you know, he said he's, he, he's, he has some theories, but they're so weird that it's hard for him to uh, think them through. Um, just in case, just in case this happens to you uh, or someone you know, if there's massive headaches or at least strong headaches, uh, maybe have someone check your atlas vertebra. Maybe it's moved backwards. I had no symptoms or problems whatsoever. I wasn't even in pain. I just went for a checkup to get my back straight and before I sit on the train um, this weekend. Yeah, that was just a, a little episode that I thought was interesting. Um, uh, yeah, let me know if you want to hear stuff like that in the future. Fadercast. It is Saturday, almost uh, 5.30 in the afternoon. We just uh, went to the park and <laughs> reconstructed the circus which means that we took like a metering thing and we measured a 12 meter, what do you call it? It's not circumference, diameter. And uh, we figured out how we want to set up stuff because where do you have a 12 meter diameter uh, possibility to do that? And that was actually really helpful. Before that, we did stuff on paper and it, that doesn't really work that well, so like, I can't really imagine that. And uh, we figured something out for the Gaz and Kitchen show that we'll now have to talk about with the, with the, what do you call him? The light engineer. We'll see. Interesting, interesting, but it was good. It was uh, much better to basically actually stand on this fake stage setup and figure out how far everything is. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Yes, this will be good. Oh, it's Saturday night. What is it? 
9, 11, the barbs just showed up and I already stole a drop from the deserving audience who paid zero euros. <laughs> so it's not their drop, it's my drop. As you might know, I have already drank a drink, maybe two. And uh, I absolutely failed at my, no, not absolutely failed, but pretty much failed at my first DJing attempt with this equipment that is so futuristic because there's no oily machinery and there's no, what do you call it? Uh, cranks to turn on no but uh yes it's, it actually works but the trick is that the music is very different from what i usually know so it's going to be very interesting barbs is dancing with a bionada and york has a polished head <laughs> i like that that's very fader cast so this might be really interesting um there's just like literally a million different dj styles if i mean they're they're not only different because you're a different person but depending on the on the style that you dj so for me i usually would loop the end of one song and the beginning of the next and then this loop would play and i would mix inside of this loop and both york and santi they run the tracks all through and then they just fade in and out and change the EQs. This is so weird that when I'm trying to DJ, I don't even know which track is actually playing because they're both playing. And for me, there's always one track playing and I'm setting up the next track and then the mix over is a very clear time in the set. While for them, it's all the time of the track. It's very, very interesting. And I hope this is even understandable because I had a bunch of vodka. Monday morning, 5.30. Um, I woke up and I had, for some reason, a memory of Saturday evening in my head where uh, Xanti said, oh, I got to change into some less warm clothing. Uh, can you, um, you know, take the take them out at the, at the next drop? Like she, what she said was take over and, uh, you know, uh mix into the into the new song um at the next drop and what happened there was that we used totally different words for different things um what she meant by the next drop was the last part that had high energy that had kick drums what i understood was the part that had no kick drums and low energy so for me it would have also be called break or something like that. That's probably what she would have said. But um, what I did was the opposite of what she suggested. And um, we made a joke that I stole the last drop. We we talked about that all evening, um, made fun of it. And um, I just woke up this morning and I thought, hmm, this is another, another um, very good example why being super precise with what you say to who you say it uh, is important. Um, uh, this is not Xanti's fault. Or this is not my fault. It's just, uh, and it, it didn't matter at all. It was just a, f uh, a little thing that uh, didn't work and that was funny. There was no consequences to it. But I just woke up and thought, hmm, being precise in your speech is so important. And also making sure um, that you are on the same page because if we talk about something like the same thing with different terminology then you can be as precise as, as you humanly could be but if i understand something differently um then anything you say is probably going to be problematic that's what uh, my brain you know was spitting out literally the second when i woke up Q and A. Q and A is a new segment where I answer your questions, as the title says. So, if you have any questions, please email me at contact at faderhead dot com, or um, leave them as a DM or a comment on my socials. Uh, you can also leave a voice message on Anchor FM slash Fadercast, which is the page for this podcast. 
And to make it a little more interesting, I asked my very lovely assistant, Devanka, who owns the great voice that says Fadercast, in between the different segments, I asked her to read the question. So let's get to it. Libertario asks, are you planning to do reanimation versions of songs like Tanz 2, 3, 4, Fistful of Fuck You, or Inside of Me, for some example? Well, this is a very good question. Uh, thank you. What he means by reanimation versions is um, for my Anima and Machina EP, which was, I think, 2016, not entirely sure. Uh, for that EP, I redid some songs like Escape Gravity and uh, what else? I don't know. I did some older songs and did the new Horizon Born. And... Um, I constantly have the feeling that I want to do new versions of all of my songs because very often when I listen to them, the sound and the singing, uh, they're not very up to 2021, 22 standard, um, at least not mine. Uh, but then again, I always write new songs. So I really don't, I really don't think that there is much of, a use for redoing old songs when I can write new songs. Uh, I also think that uh, even if I make a version, let's say of Tanz 2, 3, 4, A Fistful of Fuck You, that would objectively be better. By objectively better, I mean the sound is more modern. The sound is bigger, better, rounder, fuller, fatter. The vocals are better. Like everything is better. 95% of the people, or let it, let it be 70%, but a large majority of uh, listeners will prefer the old version simply because they're used to the old version. If you have been running to the dance floor when Dirty Girls, Dirty Boys came playing, uh, you're used to that track. If you run to the dance floor every time Fistful of Fuck You is playing, you're used to the way that sounds. And if I redo that most people will prefer the emotions like the song they will prefer the song that elicits the emotions that they had in the year 2012 when they first heard it or you know whenever that was or that they were out with their friends or with their boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever and um because most people never think in technical terms like i do and they also don't think in what could have been different, they just enjoy the song. So if if you're not analyzing the track, saying, "Oh, his vocals would uh, benefit from a de-esser," and it would be nice if there was more delay on this. If you're not that kind of person, which I am, but if you're not that kind of person, then there's really no need to um, to have new versions of these songs, because I mean. <laughs> yes, it might be interesting every now and then, but if if my favorite artist could write new songs or uh, redo old songs, half the time, I, not half the time, 75% of the time, I would prefer new songs, if they're any good, which remains to be seen. But um, I think it would be a lot of work with very shady results. Shady results meaning... I don't know if I, I would be happy with it, but uh, it, I might, but there's a very high chance that I might not be happy with it. And I'm pretty sure that most people won't be happy with it. So uh, I think for now, I'm not planning on doing new versions of something, even though I say this probably every half year, oh, I should redo a lot of my own old songs to make them sound good. But then, you know, I never do because of what I just said. I hope this answers the question. Fader cast. Monday morning, 9.30. Um, I was listening to um, the Roger Deakins podcast with uh, Lee Smith. Roger Deakins is one of the most famous cameramen and cinematographers. And Lee Smith is a very, very, very high-level editor who's done whatever. Batman, Dark Knight, uh, 
1917, Dunkirk, James Bond, like all the, the good stuff. And um, they were talking about constructive ways to get your opinion to the deciding person. So in, the, in, in movies, that would be the director. And um, Lee Smith said, you know, very often I get the the film parts and I, I see that certain scenes are not working at all. And um, But I know that the storyboard and the script, they say they want it like that. And I then decide that I'll, I'm going to do the version that they want, but where I know it won't work. And then I'll sit down and I'll do a version where I think it'll work better. And then I go to the director and say, um, here's what you wanted, but I had an idea. And he knows that when they see what they wanted, they will also see that it doesn't work. And nine out of 10 times, they will prefer his idea, but he's been respectful about it. And he did what they were initially wanting. And I see this with myself, or I saw this with myself throughout many of my years as a producer. And I see this with many, many, many other musicians that when they have an idea and they think something should be better or different, they say, oh, this doesn't work. Let's, uh, let's do it my way. And the really smart way to do that if you work with someone else, especially if the other person has deciding power, is to say, let's do it your way and maybe we do it also my way and then later we see. When I work with Danny, we often uh, sometimes get to a point um, where we're not sure which way we're going to take and then we, we do both. And then we see in the end uh, very clearly usually when you have the choice of two things, while you talk about them, you don't know which one is better, but when you actually do both, uh, you very often clearly hear or see which one is the right way. So for constructive collaboration, um, especially if you are not the deciding person, always try to do what the decision makers want and then do your thing and tell them, I've had an idea. Maybe you have five minutes to look at it or listen to it. Um, that way, it's a respectful collaboration. And if your thing is really better, they will probably choose it more often than not. Monday morning, 9.20. I am waiting for my train back from Bavaria to Hamburg. I'm not really in Bavaria, but anything south of Hamburg is Bavaria. So <laughs> technically, <laughs> I'm always in Bavaria when I'm not in Hamburg. Um, yes, what am I going to talk about? Uh, I was listening to the demos that I have for the new album, for the upcoming album. And at some point, I thought, hmm, I, I must make like, like a mission statement or um, a guideline for the album mix because the demos sound similar in mix and demo mix but also very different because they're not properly mixed um, so I think I'll have a guideline for the mixing process that will be everything louder than everything else and uh, by that I don't necessarily mean that the songs themselves have to be incredibly loud but that whenever something comes in like a new instrument or a new part that must be incredibly loud it must really pop out of the speakers and uh, I will talk about that again when I mix it but I just had this idea that this is how it's supposed to be not a balanced mix but a, like a totally unbalanced mix push stuff in people's face whenever it comes into the song and make it really aggressively uh, unbalanced uh, that's gonna be interesting see I, I'm, I'm probably gonna try this out before um, uh, committing to this this idea but I think it should be a good idea because right now it sounds nice uh, it, it already it seriously the demos sound better than the Asteria album but um, I really think I want to make it much more interesting we'll see Fader cast. 
So it's Monday uh, 4 p.m. and uh, I spent the uh, some time on the on the train to make notes on the demos so basically I played every song that I have which is 19 songs right now and um, I made notes uh, just in a Google Doc and they're just things like uh, for me saying uh, some sort of hit maybe on the very first beat before the filter sweep or need to write verse lyrics or um, should the whole song be faster lots of delay on vocals vocal sample instead of verses maybe needs variation <laughs> anvils question mark can never have enough anvils you know stuff like that do i need more lyrics or can i just repeat what i have what is the story bridge needs much more atmosphere so i have stuff like that for 19 songs and um even the ones that are finished uh, say things like re-record vocals from rewrite second verse lyrics because they're apparently not finished so um yeah that was uh, an hour, hour and a half of uh, some productive stuff here. Very happy. All right, that's it for this episode. Thanks for listening. And uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, just email me at contact at faderhead.com. You can also find me, obviously, on Instagram, um, at faderhead underscore official and everywhere else under just faderhead please be a friend and tell a friend about this podcast and uh, until next time Fader 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 Fader. Fader.